Welcome back to episode 15 of Project Ozone 2 Kappa Mode. And um, yeah, I've been doing some planting, as you can see. Uh, I'm no problem with dye now. Um, we have actually got all of these dye seeds that you see here. Uh, some problems that you may encounter on that is a specific quest. This one, Glowstone Plants. I've just completed it. I did want to show you and stop at this point rather than just carrying on with the breeding, which you don't want to see off camera. Uh, Nitro wart spores. Nitro wart spores are fairly straightforward to actually make. It's just that you need to have some specific environment uh, issues when doing it. Um, you'll see I've put this compressed cobblestone. It doesn't have to be compressed cobblestone at all. Just compressed cobblestone uh, for me because it was just the most handy material and I'm out of cobblestone. Do I have anything else I can build with? Yeah, let's use some sand. So the problem in here is light. To cross these two things, which is what you need for the nether wart spores, you need orange tulips, which needs light, and you need nether wart, which needs dark. So you've got a bit of a problem. So if we just block up the entrance for a second, uh, you'll see that the plant can't actually grow here. Oh, let's knock that out. So now this one can grow, and so can this one. The only reason that happens is because over here we have a torch, and that is one, two, three, four, five it's in the fifth block away from this one which is just enough to make this grow and just enough for this to grow as well without light at which point you can put crop sticks down and it should cross now even though i'm in this box the, uh, the sprinklers outside will still work and as you see grow incredibly quickly but night or water itself i don't think doesn't have to deal with dark so we don't have to worry about that but for uh, Permanent things. We can always set up a separate dark, uh, dark green, dark greenhouse. That seems like a, yeah. Let's not call it a dark greenhouse. Uh, we can get a, a dark growing area. Let's put it that way. Yep, there we go. And uh, back into light, of course. So let's just put. Uh, do I have any earth? No, I don't. Okay. So that's the one uh, issue. And night or wart spores lets you get. Uh, I think it's glowstone if you grow them. In fact, can we actually grow them now just to prove that they actually will work in the light? Hopefully. Uh, yeah, it's fertile and can grow. It's growing. 42%. And this grows extremely fast. 71, and that should hit 100 any second. This isn't even bred yet, so it's only one... Well, it's only the equivalent of 111. So, um, yeah, there we go. We get renewable glowstone, which is pretty good. I did then carry on a couple of uh, steps and get to lapander seeds, which I think are lapis. So you can do the same thing with getting free lapis. And if we look in the quest book, you'll see that's their lapis. There are also other ones for diamonds, emeralds, gold, iron, redstone, which I'm actually, I think I actually want. <laughs> Redstone red Edendrum, or whatever they're called. Uh, red, red, redstone. Redstone Edendrum? How is that even? Redstone Dendron. Redstone Den. Yes, okay, so how do I make Redstone Dendrum then? It's just Daisy and Red Tulip, but it has to be have Redstone all beneath whatever soil you put it on. Which is fine, I can do that straight uh, easily enough. And that's how, indeed how you get the lapis seeds. You need to put lapis ore beneath. And if you have a look down here, I don't fall off the edge of the world. You'll see random things just with random blocks in the ceiling. That's just because I don't have another layer to, to actually mask this away. But we have uh, that. And that's for the, the glowstone one, which is under, oh, under here. Uh, this wouldn't work without that glowstone underneath. So just put that in mind as well, and I'll restore all this later. Having this AgriCraft farming station is so recommended. I, I I can't say just how much you need that. Um, it is unbelievable. In fact, let me show you over here. I no, no longer have any dirt problems because it filled one of these hardened caches with sugar canes, and it's still 152,000. Um, out of 160,000, and it's just making dirt like crazy, which we can just grab and then obviously populate. Ooh, another cow. What are you? Brine. I'll take brine. 
Okay, so wh what's going on over here? Um, you may have seen this area. Well, between the episodes, more and more cows kept spawning, so I kept on capturing them, as you would, and thought that it probably would be a good thing to actually use them. So I've set them up in a little system. You saw me get the diesel cow a couple of episodes ago. So I've put a rancher behind it from MFR. This uh, block basically grabs anything that an, an, an animal would naturally block uh, drop. So uh, chickens would drop eggs, sheep drop wool, etc. if you farmed them. This, in this case, gathers diesel. <laughs> now you can't just export diesel and burn it in this high temperature furniture generator, which is another extra utility generator, just like the lava ones. So what you have to do is a bit of a... Um, a bit of a switch. If you output the diesel, and this one goes into a drum and off into other parts of the base through an ender tank, but if you put it into a fluid transposer and put a bucket in, it'll go into a bucket of diesel, which you can then transport into the high temperature furniture generator. This is just set up to export full buckets in and empty buckets back out, and it literally just cycles immediately. This also powers this, so it's all self um Self-fulfilling? Yeah, it, all, it, it basically keeps up with this. There's also enough excess power to run another sieve, which I've just been using for sieving dirt, just in case I need any of these things. And you will need at least one thing called spruce, which it hasn't dropped another one yet, but it did originally. And just keep sieving dirt until you get spruce saplings, or I think they're spruce seeds, actually, to start off with. I got two blazing pyrothium cows, would you believe? <laughs> these... Uh, well, let's just say that the furnaces are much happier now. Uh, they fill up this blazing pyrothium drum again with an ender tank, which is coming over here. I have a spare drum there, which isn't even hooked up. It's just full anyway, along with our main uh, like experimental smeltery being hooked up with pyrothium. And then down here as well, we have another pyrothium that is working our uh, main smeltery, the, the kind of automatic smeltery. I put a buffer chest in here. This works much better with a buffer chest than just feeding it straight in. The system feeds into the buffer chest. The buffer chest feeds into the smeltery. And because the smeltery can only take so many at once, while it's actually cooking up, even though it's pretty fast at the moment, you can see all that's uh, increasing really fast. Um, the system can continue to be fed it, feeding uh, things into the iron chest, which we can speed up yet further, uh, I think. I put the upgrades in here. Did I? No, oh, hang on. Yeah, so eight item conduit speed upgrades. That app puts any kind of dusts over there as much, uh, well, as fast as it can, really. Uh, the maximum is 15, I think, or something like that. I think it's like four items per upgrade. So that will be a full stack export at a time with 15. So, as you can see here, alongside the lava, I've also set up diesel. Same setup here, it just goes through buckets and into this single high temperature furniture generator. A uh, furniture generator? That'd be amazing, just pop out chairs. Furniture generator. Inside here, however, I also have it eight times. And unfortunately, when you hook this up, it just drains everything uh, really quickly. So, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to keep that off until I get a second cow, perhaps, up there. Um, this actually helps quite a lot. I think it's four, yeah, it's 400 RF per tick constantly, just from this one single. So you can imagine this one, it's eight times that. And I have a loot chest. Ah, so, so disappointing, those things. Oh, well, I guess you can't have uh, good, <laughs> good, uh, good results all the time. I've put in a compactor here, it just feeds cobblestone. Um, it feeds it into compressed cobblestone, which I can grab at any point whenever I need it. I haven't fed that compressed cobblestone into another sieving setup like this for, so far. What you can do with this is turn on recursive mode, and that will immediately start changing everything up into double compressed cobblestone, triple, quadruple, etc. And it will go as fast as this setup allows, so that's a very fast way of getting up through the cobblestone um, levels. So one of the things I do want to do is move all of the farms and animals and anything processing both of those off into their own dimension. Um, the most obvious one at this stage of the game before you get access to the mining world, which isn't yet, is the last millennium, which I uh, used in my previous. So we've got some uh, purple dye and magenta dye 
Ender, Pearl and Stone. I used in my previous playthrough for my ME system before I took a break. So that is how we get the portal to the last millennium. That's just burnt quartz in there and a clock as well as these blocks. And then I guess we can put it down, say here, and head on in. It's very fast to generate because it is, um, well, yeah, let me just make sure I light things up because there's not much to it, at least at the start. So let's just put some torches down. And you would have thought that I would have liked things up a little bit more, but uh, yep, this is pretty nice area to set things out in. Um, it's just like a second void world. Uh, well, it would be even nicer if that lit things up. Okay, so um, I'm going to put all the, the farms in here. I'm not going to bore you with the construction that comes with a cauldron. Um, that I'm not going to need uh, just yet anyway. And we can put uh, something else to go back. However, I did bring some dislocators. Not that we need it with this particular portal, but uh, just to be consistent, I guess. And that's our home. And I just need to bind one to here. Uh, so let's face. I can't tell east and uh, just set the destination. And then we can head home. Um, I'll come back for you with the soul vial at some point. In fact, do I have a spare soul vial? I don't think I do. I keep collecting more and more of those cows. Yeah, liquid nitrogen cows. Um, which reminds me, are there any more spawned? Yeah, well, there's one, but I don't think uh, adamantine. I think I've already got that one. Oh, what else do we have? Something green, liquid nitrogen, already got that one, you just saw on the screen. And get rid of the sheep, because I've already got some of those. This just means more passive mobs can spawn, which has a chance of being our fluid cows. There we go. Cleared out, and uh, yeah, I had two blazing pyrothium cows. I got a third one, actually, just while uh, while I was doing some other stuff. So, <laughs> I'm not going to be short for fuel. What I did do, however, is make Podzel. And to do that, as I said, I think earlier, um, you need spruce and some dirt. And do I have a spruce sapling? Yeah, I do. So we can go and put down some spruce trees. Do the usual. There we go. And then with our normal tools, we can, uh, in fact, no, not the normal tools. We need, uh, just picking up random stuff, need some shears. Yep. And we want the leaves. Convey mine those. And if you're wondering why everything looks very uniform and no grass grows, let's just say hitting, uh, hitting the ground with a mattock when you're in vein mining mode, not so good for your garden. Um, did we get, did we get leaves? Ah, oh, my inventory's full. Go away. Leaves. Leaves. Okay, so we just grab the leaves, we go to a crafting grid, surround, do it with them, and we get Podzel. Podzel then in turn, you put back into your farm. Somewhere like here, it's out of crop sticks at the moment. And then that will breed the these, which come from the uh, dye, dye seeds. So you can make each one if you like. I'm not going to do that on camera. But then that converts into mystical white petals, which we can do something with on camera. And you may already guessed what we're about to do. But if not, uh, let's just get rid of you guys. I do not need any of you, nor the leather, nor the beef, the spruce. The rest of it I probably want. Let's just put that dislocated pedal still back down. Again, I don't need this with this portal, but it's fine. There we go. Consistency. So um, let's move on to. I don't have any more upgrades for those. Let's just put them away. Move on to Botania now. So we should be able to make the. How is it called? Petal. Uh, Hawk 3, yes, there we go. 
with what we have in our inventory. I can make one. And then with this, I should then be able to um, make, let's just put some dirt down. I need a, um, a daisy, a pure daisy. Is it pure daisy? Uh, this is going to be, yeah, pure daisy is the next one. And uh, how do we make a pure daisy? I've got the feeling it's going to be some petals in the Petal of Hulk Authority, of course. Um, Magical Britannia item reward. Nightshade. No. Yep, so just four white petals in a Petal of Hulk Authority, but in order to do that, you need water. So I will... I was going to get the... Ah, let me just rob the infinite water from over there. That'll be quicker than making one. So if you just grab you... And for the moment, um, let's just put it here, shall we? I'm just, oh, it would be the one with the glowstone. Although, that hasn't affected the light level, so fine. Put the infinite water down. I'm hoping that this will feed water straight in. It doesn't. Oh, of course not. So the only thing we can, well, we can do something else. If I just move that down one. Um, let's say to there. And then if I do I have any fluid conduits of any kind, it doesn't have to be amazing. Conduits. If, well, we'll use Ender, but not that I needed Ender. And let's just say you're going to be extract only automatically active. I don't think we need anything else other than this for, um, there we go. Let's get rid of that highlighting mode. And now if we put our Pesla Pocket Theory down, we need to go downstairs to turn on that fluid, I think, maybe. Oh, it's not going to connect. Well, that's annoying. Fine, I will do it the old way and figure that out. Why doesn't it connect? Ah, oh, petal, no, oh, bucket. Let's just grab a bucket, shall we? If I have to do this the old-fashioned way, I guess I'll just go and take this up there and I'll figure out why that doesn't work later. No, maybe it only feeds into the side. I guess we could try that. It wouldn't be as tidy by far if that happened. No, still not willing to connect. Fine. We'll just use a bucket, shall we? I hate using buckets on these things. There we go. And then all we have to do is drop in the pedals. Yep, and do we need the Wand of the Forest to do something now? I think we do. Um, no, we can't get the Wand of the Forest. Ah. We need seeds, that's what it is. Fine. Show some seeds over there. One of the forest needs uh, the output of both pure daisy, so we can't. Uh, we're going to go around in circles. Seeds. Let's just take all of them. And here's a point where you don't want to turn on your magnet. There we go. Pure daisy. So, if I then put the pure daisy down on some earth, it will turn anything around it into the Batania equivalent. So I guess. If I just put some, some cobblestone down, uh, it shouldn't affect the cobblestone, but it should affect then anything on the same layer as it. So let's say stone. Now I have my particles down because of my armor, but you can see some particles actually affecting it. All right, this is now converted over, and I made a second one to convert some wood, so we can just vein mine this. There we go, and that's converting over into wood. There we go. Grab both of them, and then you know I can put some more wood down. Uh, I think it may convert any wood, but um, I just went with oak because that's the normal kind that uh, most people would use. So that's pretty much this quest, and once that, that last bit converts, I should get everything complete there.
Uh, I can, I think, make the Wand of the Forest now, though. Uh, living Wood Twig. I'm going to need three of those, and I'm going to need two mystical white petals. You can use any color of petals, it can give you a custom uh, wand of the forest. But this one should do just fine. This is how you manipulate Batania. Uh, or at least the various blocks involved in Batania. Uh, that should say complete, but apparently doesn't. <clears throat> so that's okay. Hopefully that will uh, work. And we'll just wait for these to complete. Um, in the meantime, what do we need for the rest of Batania? Um, let's have a look. We're going to want the... Uh, uh, oh, this is the one I'm on at the moment. We're going to want Floral Fertilizer to get the other colours. It saves us having to go through breeding. And let's just grab all of you. This may not actually count as enough now that I've used it to make the Wand of the Forest. Uh, will you count as enough? No, you won't. Okay, even more wood down, fine. So, yep, we do need to make the rest of the blocks. And I'll come back once that's, well, once we're ready to do that. Okay, so with that quest complete then, we got some rewards, day blooms and nightshades. And normally we put them down like this in a sort of crosshatch pattern. Um, and then we can make a couple of other things. A mana spreader, which is just some of the living wood and the same petals. And a mana pool, which is just some living rock. And then we can put this down in front of them. So if we put down, that's the living wood, and that's not the spreader. Put the spreader in front of them, and then the mana pool in front of that. If we then hold our wand of the forest, we should be able to see that it's transmitting mana from this to this. Not a great deal. And unfortunately, that's the, the case at the start of um, Batania. We get a lot faster mana generation later. What we have to do, however... Well, you do get these black lotuses, which are from our mob farm all the way over there. And we can use these to generate more mana. However, they don't work if the mana pool is empty, which is a little bit odd, I'll admit. So um, what I'm going to have to do is wait for that to have even a tiny amount of mana. We'll see about that in a second. The other thing we could do, I suppose... Uh, no, it does have to have some kind of mana. So, yeah, let me just get that. Uh, for example, if I drop this in, if it doesn't have any mana at all, nothing should happen. Yeah, nothing's happening. So let's wait a little while and see where we can get to. OK, I did have to replace the blocks uh, a couple of times, actually, but now it seems to be working just fine. Uh, this is spreading to this mana pool, and hopefully that means I can now use the Black Lotus Sounds like I can. And the amount of the mana pool went up. So, um, yep, it's about a tenth. So that mana pool is now full, which means we can do all kinds of other things. So, so these are very, very useful. But of course, 10 of them to fill a mana pool, uh, you may need other things going for you there. So with that in uh, mind, we can now, um, where's my... Oh, there it is, Lexica, Bat Lexica Batania. We can now generate other flowers and um, make other items. So the next one is normally Ender Flame. But what do we need for this uh, this flower floral fertilizer? Bone meal, rose red and dandelion yellow. We have those already because that's what we got from the dye seeds. So I think I have some of that in my inventory. And if you're wondering what this guy is, well, remember when I laughed the other episode about just going up through the various armor? Well, I went up through the various armor, starting with leather and going back. Let's just look at the Xanite helmet. Xanite helmet. So yeah, so I've gone through Xanite, steel, bronze, osmium, lapis, iron, chain, leather, uh, etc. Uh, now I can't go any further because we need to go to the Erebus in order to get exoskeletal armor. So chitin, I assume, or however you pronounce that. So bone meal, which we've got plenty of. And then we want the colours. So we want red, um, rose red, and yellow. We should have all of those, and I don't really need that. That's just a diluted one. Let's just grab this. 
floral fertilizer and this gives us the um the actual reward of floral fertilizer so i'm gonna make sure i've got enough in my inventory let's just get rid of this stuff we just withdrew throw some of this stuff back in and now we can take the quest reward so floral fertilizer and there we are mystical white oh no that was the one that didn't give me any good rewards and i do definitely have those but i'm not picking them back up off the ground because that actually destroys all the mana in it so we'll deal with that next when I use that for something useful. Um, what do we have first of all? Let's take a look at the Lux of Britannia to find any items. Let's go back up to the top level and then some of the items that we can actually get. So baubles and accessories, lots of stuff, particularly the various rings. Uh, Plain Strider Sash, I assume, is the run speed one. This one won't yeah, I want the Sojourner's Sash, I think. Yeah, what does it take to make you Rune of Earth, Rune of Air, Man of Steel, and Leather Rune of Earth? Okay, so we're going to have to get Runic Altar stuff, which means we need Mana Powder. The rest of those are relatively easy. Mana Steel is just iron in a, um, a mana pool, which we've already got. Mana Powder... I think we use any kind of powder. Is it just floral powder? That's like it. So let it cycle through them. Uh, is it just floral powder? Yeah. So that is a pestle and mortar. Okay. So I can go and grab some other stuff, and uh, we'll be right back and hopefully get some of these items. Uh, what's the really call to take? Hopefully this isn't terrible. It's just living stone. I hope. And a mana pearl or a mana diamond, which are equivalent. That's okay. Uh, mana pearls is just a regular ender pearl. Whoops, I've, I didn't want to take all of them, just one. And again, head back over to your mana pool, which we can fill very fast with our black lotuses, and drop it in. And you get one of those, which we can then use to craft a runic altar. Uh, if you've got enough living rock, I think I do. Okay, Runic Altar is an alternative method of crafting in Batania. It lets us uh, drop stuff onto it and then shift right click with uh, Wand of the Forest to basically start crafting. And then it crafts it and gives it us back. So that's a pretty good way of crafting in Batania. So let me go and get those other ingredients. And uh, in fact, did we get that floral fertilizer? Yes, so I can just right click. And we get random flowers from Batania everywhere, at least to start with. And that should give us some options. I can obviously, yep, <laughs> that I've used it is fine. Yeah, looks good. So here we go with crafting. You just drop stuff onto the runic altar, in this case, a feather, some string. And what was the final thing? Carpet, I think. Yeah, there it is. This mana spreader is pulling from this pool and pushing it to the runic altar, which it's gradually going through now. And to complete, you just need to throw some living rock onto there and back away for a second while the gauge fills up. It's now full. We can right click and it converts across. And I've already done that with the rune of earth, uh, earth even, not <laughs> earth. <laughs> Ha! Uh, yes, so Rune of Earth, Rune of Air. And what did we else did we need for the Sojourner Sash? Just four pieces of leather and a uh, another Mana Steel. So do we have four pieces of leather? And we get our first item in Batania. Hopefully it hasn't been changed by this mod pack to be horrendously unfair. <laughs> Maybe make it slower for me to walk places. That, that would be horrendous. Uh, let's just take one piece, of, well, half a stack of that leather and put in the Rune of Air, the Rune of Earth, and the Man of Steel. And we get Sojourner's Sash. Does it actually do anything? We're surprised. If it doesn't, it doesn't. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> Why did I think it would actually be fair? Unless I'm misremembering, but uh, the Sojourner Sash should... Hmm... Traversing terrain sometimes proves to be half when warm will increase the movement speed, jump height, and resistance to fall damage of the wearer. Oh, it comes at a mana cost. Ah, I'm misremembering. I, what I need is a mana tablet or a ring of some kind. So, what's the mana tablet then? Uh, we can... Oh, that's very, very simple. Uh, I just need some more stone. Nearly done. <laughs> It, as you can tell, it's been a while since I played Batania. Uh, stone there. We don't have any more. I think it's upstairs. We can just convert this across from here. Yeah. I'm going to need more living stone. That's the, uh, the thing. So that's okay. I will later automate this, which will be pretty good. So where's the torch? Yeah. Just so this doesn't... Get um, yeah, me sp getting spawned on in the blood moon. It is the blood moon. Okay, definitely don't want to get spawned on. Let's wait for that to finish. Okay, that's now finished. So we can just grab all of you. And I think we just needed another mana pearl. I think, which is fine. We've got some down here, or rather, we've got the ender pearl. And then what we're going to have to do is take some mana from this mana pool to power everything. So, uh, first of all, let's just convert you. Great. And I have a crafting table somewhere. There it is. Just drop that down so I've got something to craft on. And just convert this to a mana tablet. Then you're going to need to get out to your wand of the forest. Switch it into the mode where it gives mana to mana tablets and then uh, drop your mana tablet and back away for a little while. You see it is actually draining the mana level there. As long as it doesn't drain it fully, we have more blacker lotuses. So that will be pretty good. Is that it done? No, it's about halfway. So I'll put it there and then I can drop in some more black lotuses to keep this thing topped up. In my inventory, does it make me faster? Yeah, it seems to be. Um, let's just remove this and let's double check. Yeah, that's faster. Good, I'm pleased. I'm not pleased about the fact that I had to carry the mana tablet around with me though, so I will have to sort that out with some kind of passive generation of that in the future let's let that fill up but yeah we got a faster move speed finally so good conclusion for this episode we are going to go through uh Britannia to get a lot more some of it off camera though um there are a few more items that i want to actually do plain striders um it doesn't give a speed boost but when you walk it'll get more and more charge and able to go much faster but whenever you stop, it resets. So it's sort of like a, a scaling thing. Band of Mana is probably one to actually grab. Mana Seal with some Mana Steel that functions like the tablet, but could be worn as a bauble. Okay, so maybe I do that so it doesn't take up an inventory slot. Um, does it have to be empty, though? Because I've got some steel. We could just convert that across if it doesn't have to be empty. Um... One, two, three, four. And you. And it goes back to empty again. Fine, I can fill it up and then we can put it in a bauble slot. Um, slightly annoying. <laughs> I would lose some health, I guess. No? Uh, yes, I did lose some health. Because we'd be into blue with that. But... All for the gain of an inventory space. I will take it. That seems fine to me. And then we can refill you with more Lotus. Great. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. We've started Batania. There's going to be a lot more with Batania that we're going to need to actually do because it blocks some of our access to the later mods. 
So yeah, we're going to have to go through, unfortunately, but that's fine. Um, lots of upgrade items that'll let us power up. This should last for ages. Yeah, uh, let's pop you in here. And now we can go pretty fast. Cool. Happy. Thanks for watching.